I've been very impressed. Um, I, I like when people walk the talk. I mean, it is clear that they do state um, in having this investment summit uh, made the decision to, you know, focus on attracting investors, listening to investors, and working with those investors for the development of a do state and Nigeria. And um, I understand that uh, Alayo Rodaro means progress. And frankly, I think it's I think I'm making progress. The turnout has been excellent, and I would say the discussions have been very very impressive as well i'm also impressed by the quality of uh, business and investors that are already doing business here and i'm also impressed by what the state wants to do going forward particularly around industrial parks and what i might call you know just trying to um, increase both the quantum and the concentration of investment to create scale yeah. and make it lower the cost of doing business. Well, it seems some states, I wouldn't say most states, it seems some states in Nigeria are really embarking or like they actually walking this path as well in terms of, you know, putting together summits to attract investment into their state. Many say it's the way to go, especially in the face of the dip in oil prices and the fact that it's about time that we stop relying on the allocation that comes from the, from the federal government. Now, while most states want to tow this path in terms of, of course, attracting investments into their state what do you think they should look out for what do you think they need to do first if they want to ensure that their summits don't just end up being discussions I think um, in our view there are, there are three things you need to get right for the summits to translate I mean, the first thing is that uh, as you know fundamentally what investors are looking for is an enabling environment and that enabling environment means that you're making it easier, removing the, you know, the bottlenecks, the barriers, the, 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 the constraints to doing business. It also means that you're putting in the infrastructure. Now, the good news is that some of these things you can actually do in partnership. In fact, you should do in partnership in collaboration with the investors. So that's point number one, that you are trying to work with them to create the enabling environment. The second thing is to create, the, make the investment case, investment promotion, which means that like work is being done to proactively identify the opportunities to invest, including in infrastructure and in industry and in all the other sectors like agriculture, for instance, which is an area of great interest to us as a nation and to a do state. And then the final thing is actually the continuing engagement and communication, where the summit is part, but it's not the only part. It's in many respects only the beginning, meaning that you have to then have follow-up steps, which is why you have to have a, you know, dedicated teams as well as uh, people who, frankly, understand the language of business. Mm. Now, listening to um, Alaja Liko Dangote earlier on, he talked about the fact that there is a need for better collaboration between the public and private sector. In his words, he says, one part, one, yeah, one part doesn't have to lose for the other um, to win. Talk us through how much Nigeria's federal government today is working with the private sector in terms of, of course, making it easier for them to do business, making it easier for their businesses to also thrive, especially for those who are already in the country. Yes, so I think you've mentioned the first way in which we're working with them. And I think it's the most fundamental and most important way for private investors, which is, as a government, make it easier for us to do business, um, starting with those that are already here and, of course, attracting new ones. But we also believe that like, the, the relationship with the private sector should go beyond that to include working with them even on policy and on join on working jointly to solve the problems because like you said um Alaji Dangote said it's a win-win thing for instance to deal with the problems of infrastructure problems of training problems around financing problems around policy problems around trade and market access why do i tell you all this we have the industrial policy and, uh, and competitiveness advisory council the industrial council we call it for short and it's actually a partnership between the government and, and, the, and, the, and the private sector. We've now included the state governments as well from all the geopolitical zones. And there we've identified the critical constraints and we're working together to solve them. And you find that it's a much more effective way of collaboration and of, of bringing resources to bear on what we want to do. The final thing I would say is that also in investing in infrastructure, you know, using public-private partnerships and other you know, creative financing mechanisms to attract funding, not just from the private sector, from development finance institutions, from FDI, foreign direct investment. And because I think we need to accelerate our pace in terms of solving our infrastructure or meeting our infrastructure needs. And the best way to do it is to bring more collaborators, more partners to the party. Now, 2018 is around the corner. There are lots of questions as to how the Nigerian government really plans to fund its budget. At the same time, the government is also hungry you know, to attract investors into certain sectors in the country. What remains their biggest fear today? What remains their biggest worry 
core Nigeria's economy today? Well, I think you talked about the budget and you talked about um, the 2018 budget. What I would say about the budget is that, like, in some respects, actually somewhat conservative as well, because, you know, we've used oil prices in the mid-40s. Uh, we have certainly have used foreign exchange also at the, at the CPN rate, not the CA, uh, IFX uh, rate. And, um, and then also we expect inflation to come down. Now, also note that we've included some, you know, reforms and some structural things that will happen in the economy, including some of the assets that the government may, you know, either sell down or attract partners into, and also leveraging the work we're doing in the private sector to finance our budget. You know, I think in general, if we do those things well, by the way, all this is fit into the economic recovery and growth plan. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find that one, that um, we, will, um, we will be able to implement the budget. Obviously, the budget is a document that calls for collaboration between the executive and the National Assembly, and of course, all the other stakeholders like the private sector. The final thing I would say is that people just want to see us work our talk. And I think what we're trying to demonstrate as a government is that we have integrity. We mean what we say, we say what we mean, and we do, so, we, we do what we say we're going to do. Mm. And I think when we do that, it creates market confidence. And I think our confidence is growing. Like, you know, the ease of doing business rankings that just came out. You know, we said we wanted to move 20 places. We moved 24 places. We have received a lot of good feedback from that, from the stakeholders yeah. on that. Well, there are those who say, of course, um, the benefits keep on trickling in. Do you think a free float of the currency, say, in 2018, is a solution to most of the problems that we have today? I think what is clear is that, like, creating a market, you know, for the currency through the investment and export uh, foreign exchange window has been an inspired um, move. In the sense that, like, it, it, does, it does create an opportunity for willing buyers and willing sellers to trade in a legitimate fashion. Now, whether government should join that market, you know, in a way to unify the market, which is really what you're talking about, mm -hmm. remains to be seen. But the important thing is that whether government does or not, provided there's a market for the private sector investors, if the government decides to fund some of its, you know, priority and strategic projects at a slightly lower rate, so be it. I don't think most investors will find that a worry, provided there is transparency and integrity in the market. Now, when you take a look at, when you take a look across sectors, you know, in Nigeria's economy, in what area do you hope or do you want to see more investment? So let me put it this way: What sector do you think holds, you know, the most potential, but then really hasn't been maximized or even touched in the first place? I think if you had to pick one sector, which is both the problem and the solution, yeah. in other words, it's both a challenge but it's also an investment opportunity. It's infrastructure, and it's infrastructure in the sense that, like, if we can find a way to partner with the private sector and other players to build that infrastructure in the country, Nigeria will just take off like a rocket. Mm -hmm. 